I've been making YouTube videos for nearly 10 years now, and I can say for sure that one of the biggest mistakes I've made in that time is overcomplicating my videos, both in terms of length and subject matter, but also the physical gear setup it takes to film them. And right now in 2024, I have one of the most simple setups I've ever had, and I'm loving it. So I thought I'd make this video to show you guys my setup to hopefully give you some inspiration for how you might wanna make your own videos. Since less really is more, and the less complication you have overall, the more videos you're going to produce as a result because it's less setup time and less overall time wasted with unnecessary stuff. So let's get started with the gear I'm using. Everything you see in this video, you'll find links down below. So firstly, for the camera setup, I'm using the Sony a7S III, which I've been using for a couple of years. I think Sony make great cameras. And while this is probably more towards the middle end in terms of YouTube cameras, Sony also have low end, much cheaper cameras than the a7S III. So I can absolutely recommend them. Then at the front, you'll find a 20 millimeter lens. And I find this is good for a nice wide angle shot of me talking because in general for YouTube videos, wide angles work far better than tight shots. At the bottom is a battery grip and this means I can slot in two batteries at once for double the shooting time. Then on the top, I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro which is currently pointed backwards so I can talk into it. When I'm at my desk, however, filming a video, I only use this microphone as a backup audio source since I've ruined audio in my videos too many times over the years to rely on just one source. So here it sits as a backup if I really need it. Then the main mic I use for my videos is the Rode VideoMic NTG. And I've got it connected to my computer via USB-C cable and I just place it on my desk on a small Insta360 tripod which seems to do the job. And I think this is the best position for it because it's close to my mouth and the closer the mic is to your mouth, the clearer the audio is going to be. As for lights, I use three different lights to achieve a three-point lighting setup, which is probably overkill, but they're pretty cheap since Aperture are a budget-friendly brand. So here I've got the Aperture 150C, which serves as my key light, and this light is way too bright for my use case of YouTube videos. However, it can easily be dimmed through the smartphone app or on the physical light. And that's another thing I love about Aperture lights is all of the recent ones are smartphone compatible, so you can change the brightness, the color, the color temperature, and more through your phone. As you can see, I've also got a mini light dome with a honeycomb grid attached to it, which diffuses the lighting nicely. Now I do have a window here that I could just open, but I still find that any kind of daylight in your videos is still gonna cause an issue with color correction because clouds change. The sun comes out, it goes away, and it usually happens midway through your video and it kind of ruins the lighting. So for consistency, I still block out natural light and use only controlled lights so they stay at the exact same level of brightness. Then attached to my desk with a desk clamp is an aperture tube light and this is my fill light for filling in the other side of my face and making sure I'm not completely in shadow. Then here at the back, my backlight isn't an aperture light, but it's a cheap softbox. However, underneath it is an aperture smart globe, which again, I can connect to my phone to change the intensity and color. And this makes for the perfect backlight or fill light or even key light if you really wanted to keep costs down. And then for my setup, I've got it serving as background decoration as well. Do you need a three-point lighting setup? Not really. If you can get one light, that's great. Two lights is even better, but sometimes it's also just about finding the right angle of the room you're in. Sometimes if your video is short enough, you can get away with shooting in daylight and the natural light through the windows acts as natural three-point lighting. So that's really the majority of my setup right there. The camera, the microphone, and the lights, all of which I've pre-configured the camera with the right settings, the lights with the right brightness and placement around the room and the microphone with the right audio levels. So when I make a video, I just turn them on literally one click of a button and they're on and I can start filming. And that's how things should be. Make life easy for yourself. Don't make it so you have to manually set up everything every time with a thousand different components. Set it up once, then use it many, many times over. Some of the small things I'll point out is I'm using audio engine speakers to the left and right of my computer. And these are quite good. They've got a good amount of bass and they're pretty affordable for desktop speakers. My computer is a Mac Studio and I've also got the Mac Studio display. 
Then underneath it, I've got a USB hub by the brand Sateki, which I'll link below, which is great for inserting SD cards and USB cables from the front of your computer instead of the back, which is kind of annoying. Then I've got a wireless MagSafe iPhone charger coming from the bottom. In terms of background decoration, this time with this new office, I decided to keep it as simple as possible, since really what communicates best on YouTube is authenticity. And with every other set I've had, it's had a very man-made feel to it, kind of like I'm curating it with photos and plain colors. Whereas real everyday objects like the ones behind me will give your videos a more authentic feel like this is an actual office, which it is, but it's also a YouTube set that looks like a real office. So I can definitely recommend authentic backgrounds because again, they communicate so much better than staged ones. Again, I'll link all of my YouTube gear below, but again, if you were a beginner creator just starting on YouTube, you don't even need a quarter of this. You literally only need a smartphone and a decent audio recorder of some kind, whether your phone can do it well, or you just invest in a cheap USB mic. That's really all you need to get started. And then as you become more invested in YouTube and make more videos, that's when you start upgrading these things one by one. Maybe you get a cheap Sony camera and a basic light. You could definitely achieve a three point lighting setup using just the aperture bulbs then put them inside cheap soft boxes from Amazon then when you've got more money coming in from YouTube ad revenue affiliate sales and brand deals that's when you reinvest it into better equipment but again I think that reaches a limit you don't need to keep going and going eventually you'll get to the point where it's good enough and you should keep it that way in order to keep things as simple as possible where it's one click to turn everything on and start recording now speaking of keeping things simple I just found a new way of making YouTube thumbnails that is completely free and the result results are amazing. In this video here, I'll share all the details so you can say goodbye to paid subscriptions and hello to awesome thumbnails. 